But when we look at World of Warcraft for this example, when I'm doing this this test, I'm going to take a look at that in a second. Um, AMD scored like 180, 190 FPS, Intel's like 220, 225. Uh, and I even have ran some 10th gen chips as well. But between single thread and architectural and stuff, like AMD was never going to win. Even Zen 3 was like 10% behind. Um, but I'm hoping that changes a, a little bit. Um, excuse me one second. I'm, I'm running the benchmark here and I, I didn't change the settings. Um, I, I did? Huh? FXAA, level 8 settings, that's why I normally run this specific test. I'm running 240 to 250 FPS. My average is 252. I'll end this benchmark here. 251. 225, 231 for 10th gen, rip Intel. So I do have to go over some disclaimers. I don't have a lot of these chips available. So I took some historical data that I've had and I re-ran tests to verify with what I do have to verify that the performance was not gonna change. And I had to do additional tests. I did a bunch of runs and averaged everything together to get some pretty good info. But I did have some local people and one or two people, uh, two people online help me out with this. I wish to remain anonymous, which is fine. No big deal there. But basically, I found um, some people with identical platforms, EVGA 1080s, uh, 16 gigs of uh, 3600 megahertz memory, and then corresponding CPU motherboards. Now, this isn't a perfect test, but this is going to probably be pretty repeatable. So I cross-referenced a lot of this stuff online as well. So when they gave me stuff like Cinebench and um, Blender that they matched up what was online, I did for the Intel chips just use the automatic overclocking features I did for AMD. So the 10th gen chips were running at the stated max, which is like I think uh, 5.1 or 5.0 and like 4.8 or something like that on the 10 600. Um, the test benches were pretty much identical. Um, I corrected some earlier benchmarks, my 3600, and just note that this data could be up to 5% wrong. Just keep that in mind, but without further ado, let's take a look at Cinebench first. So taking a look at Cinebench R20, this is impressive. 591 single core. Now some people have gone upwards of like 600, this chip, from what I observed, would hit about four, six and a half under the single core, but I was getting an all core boost of four, five to four, six. Hence, the huge gap increase going from a 3600 to a 5600X on the multi core. That, that is the largest improvement of any Zen chip. So, going from uh, say generation one to generation two and then generation two to three and then now three to four that increase is huge We're 400 points away from a CPU that has literally 33% more cores and processing threads Now looking at blender BMW again We saw a very nice improvement from just under four minutes to just over four minutes again we are right on the doorstep of Ryzen 3000 series eight core processors. We are well ahead, well, well ahead of the 10600K. 10600K was trained blows at 3600 in productivity. The 5600 absolutely puts that chip to rest. Now here's the test everybody's been waiting for. Look at that increase. I previously reported a 3600 to 14. I ran that test five times, down and back each, so average 10 tests together, and I got 184. I got nowhere near 214. I don't know where I got that data from. It could have been a glitch. I'm not entirely sure. This kind of test is kind of hard to do, to be honest. But going from 184 to 253 FPS is huge. The one game Intel had an advantage of, it got not just passed, but, but just leapfrogged out of the way. And you can see the Intel chips are all really close to each other. And, and mind you, those chips are boosting to around five, anywhere from like four, eight to five, one gigahertz in all core. This is boosting like four, six. Granted, all core is four, five, 
but this was so incredibly Im impressive. We are now at about a 10% margin of win. So we went from 15% down to 10% ahead. In one generation in World of Warcraft, we gained 25% performance. That is absolutely insane. And wh why this is so important is these numbers look great, but these aren't real, meaning that, like, sure, when you fly and nobody's near, you can get great FPS. You go into a big battleground, 40v40, you go into a raid, a, a world boss, whatever have you, you go from 250 FPS down to, like, 40 or 50. So getting a 25% increase at that point can be meaningful when you go from, say, 40, you gain 25% FPS to 50. That's going to make a huge difference in your experience in WoW, and I really think this is really telling on where we're at in the CPU market and where we could potentially be heading. So, Intel had one thing left, and now it's gone, and that was World of Warcraft. The tricky part of this game is we're seeing 250, 300 FPS, but that's actually not what you really get. When you're in a large battleground or a large raid with or an outdoor world boss of 50, 60 people, that 300 becomes like 40, just like that. You see systems with 10, 100Ks in 3080s, and you will not average 60 FPS on some raid bosses. That's the reality of the situation. Which is why the minute gains from going from Ryzen to Intel never really made a lot of sense. When you go from 37 to 40 FPS, you don't really notice things except the extra $100 that came out of your pocket. But now we have some serious competition. The only game that was left that was heavily in Intel's favor is gone. And it's gone in a big way. 253 FPS versus, from my testing, 225. But I've gotten some 10th gen people to test 10th gen chips, and they're like low 230s, high 220s. So, legitimate win for AMD. This is huge. I am really happy to see this. Hopefully, this will drive better competition from Intel on the next generation. I'm not very hopeful based off of rumors, but competition is good. But let's have a moment of silence. The king is dead. Long live the king. And hopefully, maybe their offspring will take the crown again. But if you do like this video, hit the like button, dislike, hit the dislike button, leave a comment, get subscribed, buy stuff from Amazon, so I do get a small kickback from that. And as always, this is Steve from Big Head Tech, and I'll see you all later on down the road.